So, I think it's safe to say that most people in this room, if not all, are familiar with services like DHL, Amazon, to have packages delivered to your house, or fruit. But what if I told you there's a very kind of spe a very special delivery kind of service that helps to treat patients and even save lives? So I'm Roy van der Mill, and I'm a biomedical engineer who develops nanotechnology. But you can kind of think of me as a delivery guy who makes sure that drugs end up in the right place in the body. <laughs> so, why is that important? And how do I do that? Now, imagine we, me and you, the audience, we represent this body that you see here. So I'm the head with the brain and the big mouth. Uh, here in the front, you have the lungs. Then you have there the stomach, uh, the liver, the intestine in the back. And I guess, you know, the people that are closest to the exit, you know what you represent. <laughs> now, imagine we have a headache. You can simply take a paracetamol. But how does the paracetamol know where to go? It's not like a cruise missile, right, that you take and it goes straight after its target. Now, actually, I have some paracetamol molecules here. So when you take a paracetamol to relieve your pain, first, it ends up in the stomach, where it falls apart. Then it travels to the intestine. Are you ready, intestine? There you go. Very good. Then it gets taken up by the blood, and then it reaches the liver. You ready, liver? There you go. And after that, it travels all over the body. For example, in the lungs. <laughs> That's a side effect. Or maybe even much further. Are, are you ready, intestine, over there? There you go. <laughs> Very good. Sorry for the other side effect. So, for conventional drugs, small molecule drugs, we call them, that you take as a tablet, like paracetamol, it's not a problem that it distributes all over the body. Its side effects are so small that it's okay if it reaches places where it shouldn't be. But there are also drugs where this becomes very problematic. Now imagine that instead of, you know, these paracetamol molecules, I would have been throwing around chemotherapeutic drugs at you. Yeah, you would probably not have been very happy, because they're generally considered very toxic. But actually, chemotherapeutic drugs are very good at killing cancer cells. The issue is, is that they're also very good at killing healthy cells. So when we treat patients with chemotherapeutics that distribute all over the body, it's these side effects that we're all very familiar with, the hair loss, the nausea, but also a reduction in red and white blood cells. And this actually limits the dose, how much chemotherapeutic drug can be given to a patient. Now, there is also drugs that are protein-based, protein-based drugs, or biologicals, as we call them. And instead of a tablet, they're usually injected in your bloodstream. You can think of antibody drugs. They have a really good target affinity, but still, they distribute over the entire body, causing side effects. In addition, these types of drugs, they have to be produced by cells or bacteria in really large reactor vessels the sizes of, of swimming pools. Now, how great would it be if drugs could be produced by our own body at the right place at the right time? And the newest class of drugs, called RNA therapeutics, does exactly that. And you're probably thinking about the COVID mRNA vaccines, and you're already thinking in the right direction. But let's talk a little bit about using an RNA molecule as a drug, because as a drug, it's very unattractive. First of all, RNA is huge. It's about 100 to 1,000 times bigger than, you know, the paracetamol I talked about before. So also, you know, no option of throwing that at you because it would be the size of the room, right? In addition, 
these molecules are highly negatively charged. And our cells are also negatively charged on the outside. So these drugs, they do not go into cells. And they do need to go into cells to have a therapeutic effect. And third, and this is very important, if you give nucleic acids to the body, the body thinks there's a viral or a bacterial infection, and it will, you know, all alarm bells go off. It will try to get rid of all of this stuff immediately. So how do we address those challenges? When I was a student, uh, my aunt passed away from cancer. And then a few weeks later, I attended a lecture from a professor who showed me for the first time that you can package these molecules in nano-sized delivery systems that reach the tumor and you have less exposure to healthy tissues. And I was amazed by it. And I decided to make my career out of this. Because in nature, we actually have a lot of transport and delivery systems. And if you think about delivering genetic information, you know, viruses like the coronavirus, they have, of course, evolved to be nature's best delivery system for genetic information. Now, we have also things that are called exosomes or extracellular vesicles. And these are used by cells to exchange information and molecules. And another system that we have in our body are called lipoproteins, like HDL and LDL. Maybe you heard of that. It's your good cholesterol and your bad cholesterol. And these are nanoparticles that transport cholesterol from the liver to the tissues and back. Now, in all of these delivery and transport systems, they have these very interesting natural building blocks in common. And by learning which building blocks nature uses, for example, cholesterol and phospholipids that make up the outside of your cells, but are also involved in these, in these transport systems, we can design a nature-inspired delivery systems for these chunky RNA molecules. And the way that we do that, and what we call these systems, are lipid nanoparticles. And I think that a lot of you are intimately familiar with lipid nanoparticles. Anyone who's had an mRNA jab would have had these systems injected into them. So we're talking about a nanoparticle that's 100 nanometers in diameter. To compare, our blood vessel diameters are about 50 to 200,000 times bigger. So when you inject these systems in the bloodstream, they can circulate and reach tissues. Now, why is that important? There's two reasons to have this lipid nanoparticle system. Right? One is to protect the RNA. Right? If you think of the RNA as your phone, yeah, you want to put a cover around your phone that if you drop it, you, know, you protect your very expensive iPhone or an old phone like mine. It also ensures this lipid nanoparticle system that this RNA payload is delivered in the right place. The same as DHL slapping on you know, a barcode and an address label on the box to make sure that it gets delivered in the right place. So to understand how we can use RNA as a therapeutic, I'm going to give you a quick lesson in molecular biology. So for the people who are not in this field, bear with me, right? All of the trillions of cells in our body contain a fold. This fold is called a nucleus, and it houses our genetic code, our precious genetic code, the DNA. Now, if cells get an input, for example, you've eaten something and you need to produce insulin, a piece of that DNA code, a temporary copy ma is made out of it. It's called messenger RNA. And that temporary copy of your code is funneled out of the fault into the what we call the cytoplasm. And there, the code is actually translated into a functional product called protein. Now, most of the conventional drugs, like the small molecules that I told you about, or the biologicals, they all act on proteins. Proteins that are inside the cell, outside the cell, on the surface of the cells. 
And what they do is they usually inhibit or block the function of these proteins to treat disease. Now, the strength of RNA drugs is our ability to either up or downregulate how much of that functional product, the protein, is being made without actually interfering with DNA in the vault. So instead of administering drugs to the body, we actually provide the body with a blueprint so the body can be its own drug factory. Now, the elegance of that is that we make use of the body's kitchen, the cells, where all the ingredients are already present. So instead of having a box delivered from HelloFresh, you only need to provide the recipe. And therapeutic proteins can be produced. However, you need to make sure that you deliver the recipe to the right kitchen and at the right time. Now, what's the current status of RNA drugs? What do we have now? Basically, it's limited to two broad applications. And the first one you know, right? By, in, by putting an mRNA into these packages that encodes for, for example, a viral protein, you know, we can trigger the immune system to recognize this viral protein. And if you then get infected with a virus, your immune system is able to react fast. So in addition to COVID-19, we can also do this for the flu, for your annual flu shot, and for other infectious diseases. But there are also efforts ongoing to do this for cancer. You can provide instructions to your body's immune system to go after cancer cells. Now, the other application is that you take these same particles and you inject them in the bloodstream. What will happen is they will travel, most of them, to the liver. And this gives a lot of opportunities to use the liver as your own biofactory. For example, to produce those antibodies, those biologicals that I mentioned before. But you can also imagine there are people who, for example, cannot produce certain clotting factors. And that's problematic when you have to have surgery. You can provide those patients with the instructions to make these clotting factors again. But what does the future hold for these RNA therapeutics? Now, one of the most exciting developments is our ability to take these packages for gene editing approaches or gene repairing approaches. And these approaches, they actually induce permanent changes in the DNA, so they have to be very precise. Now, imagine a cell in red that produces a protein that causes disease. You ideally want to do one or two things. You want the cell from stopping you know, that production of that protein, or you want to fix that error in the DNA so it starts producing the right protein again. Now, this is now possible with gene editing, and we can do several approaches. One, we can bring very specialized scissor-type enzymes in the cell that cut the DNA, and then the cell wants to repair that DNA, and there it makes errors. And this usually leads to you know, gene expression shutting off, so that protein is no longer produced. There are also highly specific editor enzymes that we can bring into a cell that can specifically repair pieces of DNA. And that leads to the production of the right protein again. Now, for this to happen, we need to put two elements in this lipid nanoparticle. One, in red, the mRNA that encodes for this scissor enzyme, and two, in green, a guide RNA that tells these scissors where to cut in the DNA. Right? You don't want to random start cutting anything, let alone your DNA, trust me. Now, let me give you an example. Meet my grandfather, Opa, Jan van Maurik. Right? He survived the Second World War, uh, but unfortunately, I never got to meet him because he passed away about a decade before I was born, after suffering from a series of heart attacks. And for Opa Jan and many other patients, their heart disease is caused by elevated levels of LDL, low-density lipoprotein, the bad cholesterol that I told you about before. And elevated levels of LDL, or your bad cholesterol, 
they lead to these fatty deposits in your blood vessels. And you compare them a little bit to a pimple, right? If a pimple, if you squeeze it, stuff comes out. If one of those fatty acids or fatty deposits, if it ruptures, the stuff that comes out, you know, can actually block the arteries in your heart, you have a heart attack, or shoots up to the brain, and then you have a stroke. And of course, while treatment for heart disease has you know, improved tremendously over the last 50 years, it's still one of the leading causes of death in the Western world. And there are many, many patients, millions of people that take cholesterol-lowering drugs, LDL-lowering drugs, statins, every day. Now imagine of taking a pill every day, instead of that, you would only need one shot for the rest of your life to reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. And this is exactly what is now possible with gene editing. When you can package these elements, an mRNA encoding for one of those scissor enzymes or one of those editor enzymes, and in green, a guide RNA that tells exactly where to cut. And if you make these changes in the gene responsible for your LDL production, this actually results in a prolonged lowering of your LDL levels, and that also leads to you know, less of these plaques or fatty deposits in your arteries, and that reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease. So this can be a revolutionary new treatment for people who are at risk you know, of developing a heart attack, like myself. So I, I started this talk by explaining how conventional drugs spread over the entire body, and sometimes that's problematic, and sometimes it's not. And, and sorry for the people who got hit with the paracetamol. So with the next generation of RNA therapeutics, we'll be able to treat a broad range of disorders, from very rare genetic disorders to cancer, and to cardiovascular disease in a specific and highly personalized way. However, to unleash the unlimited potential of RNA therapeutics, you know, we're dependent on delivery services and delivery guys like me, and who develop and improve the nanotechnology to make sure things get delivered in the right place. We need to protect the RNA payload, and we need to make sure that it gets into the right cell and the right organ. So that in the future, we'll be able not only to deliver these types of drugs to the liver, but also, for example, in the spleen for immunotherapy, or to the lungs to treat cystic fibrosis, and even into the bone marrow where we can fix errors in stem cells. So 50 years ago, unfortunately, this was not available for my grandfather. But for all of us, you and me, you know, delivery service is now available. So next time or when you order a package online, think about that a delivery service might save your life in the future. Thanks.